Move your crypto into cold storage, guys. Take control. Hi, everybody. Emily Binder here. Let's talk about cold storage and Bitcoin and getting off of exchanges. I'm going to do a little cold storage transfer party and you can join me for it. But first, why is this important? So when you think about Bitcoin, the most important concept in Bitcoin is ownership. And with a cold storage wallet, only you have access to the keys that prove that you own your own money. I've used a few different exchanges over time. Those were fine for a while, but I had always planned to move everything into a wallet. And this is a wallet that my friend Davis Bitsky recommended, the Trezor Model T. It cost about $250. I'll put a link in the description below. You only want to buy these wallets on a legitimate retailer or direct from the company that's selling it like Ledger, Trezor, other ones too. So why is this all happening now? Why is everybody moving their crypto off of the exchanges? Well, as you've probably heard in the last couple of months, a lot of things have been going on in the crypto market. Essentially on June 13th, Celsius, global crypto lender, stopped all withdrawals across the network and they froze $12 billion in investor money through that move. The next one to succumb to the crypto route was the staking platform Finblox, which restricted the monthly withdrawal limit to a mere $1,500 on June 16th, 2022. Soon after the Celsius situation, June 17th, Babel, I think it's Babel or Babel, Babel Finance also froze all further withdrawals on its network as it was facing unusual liquidity pressures. According to Coindesk, Babel was knee deep in debt with an outstanding debt of $3 billion while its valuation stood at $2 billion. So what's going on here is a lot of the crypto lenders and exchanges that are giving you really high interest rates, they don't have the assets to back up the interest rates when there's a run on the bank, essentially, just like with what happens with a run on the bank in the Great Depression, right? Same kind of thing. Bitcoin was intended to be bought and sold from one person to another as a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized asset. As interest grew, centralized exchanges began springing up to connect buyers and sellers more easily. And now it can seem impossible to buy any crypto without needing to use an exchange, but that's not the case. By taking everything into your own hands and really owning what is supposed to be a decentralized asset is the best way to go. And there's no judgment. If you're still on an exchange, great. Like I've been on them too. It's easier that way, right? But it isn't supposed to be that easy yet. That's kind of the whole point of it. And with a little more effort come greater benefits, security, ownership. It's not dollars. So let's go through this. I'm pretty happy with so far the experience here. Now, go to truly transfer everything. I'm in BlockFi at the moment. BlockFi has been great. I've been earning interest on the BlockFi credit card. I've earned interest on my Bitcoin and my ETH balances. However, I want to go to cold storage because I'm seeing the headlines every day of these exchanges are, you know, not liquid and they can't let you take your money out. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Someone else that you should be following if you're interested in all this is my friend Tyrone Ross. He is one of the absolute experts in cryptocurrency. Tyrone Ross, you can follow him on Twitter. He's at TR401. I'll put a link in the description below, but he also does a podcast called On Purpose with Tyrone Ross, which is through Coindesk, and it's fantastic. He has such a deep understanding of cryptocurrency and has he was early. He was talking about this years ago. We were at like the TD Ameritrade link event, January 2020, right before COVID. Tyrone's on stage, hashtag no slides. The guy's on stage like, he's just talking about it's going to democratize the world. It's going to empower people who are unbanked. That's the real use case here. It's, it's really... What else is in the box? Okay, so there's a cord, right? You have to plug this in. Everything is happening offline. This is not on an app and it's not stored anywhere in the cloud, which is the beauty of it. So it's it's so offline. They're like, don't take a picture. Don't store it in Evernote or Google Drive. You're going to have a 12 word phrase. That's your secret key. And that needs to be in your brain. So I've written down all 12 of the words in my recovery seed. I checked them seven times. I paused the video and said them out loud to myself. I didn't want to have a dyslexia moment. I don't, it's, it's stressful. Like you really need to focus and it, don't be drinking when you're doing this. Serious, ready to activate coins. So I'm choosing, I chose Bitcoin here. And by the way, my device is unlocked. While I was on pause, triple checking everything, I re-entered my pin into the Trezor to kind of wake it back up. Okay, complete setup. Great, I'm gonna edit the name. The assets that I chose, which are Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
are ready. When I first moved my crypto out of Coinbase, basic bitch, into BlockFi, I did it in so many different transactions because I kept thinking like, is this going to fail? It was stressful. Basically, I'm going to do a couple of tests here. And if it's working and good, I'm just going to dump it in. Because Move your crypto into cold storage, guys. Take control. I'm Emily Bender. I'll be back next time. Thanks for watching.